This is Halcyon Moon. Incoming! My boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds. Frustrating. Everything down to the circuit boards is past warranty, so I have the pleasure of making life-or-death decisions on a shoestring budget. Plus, there's no time to train my successor or document fixes in a way that anyone outside the family would understand. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I'm really just a, a dab hand with a wrench. Nothing special. Not like a chief engineer. Don't sell yourself short. It doesn't take a seasoned pro to tinker on Groundbreaker. Just someone who knows how a ship ought to feel. We're always thirsting for help. If you could find your way around this labyrinth of ducks and panels, we could work something out. You see any bite-sized Tennyson children running around? I didn't think so. The next captain won't have my heritage. I'll have to foster that talent from somewhere. It's only a question of when. You've got my attention. You're right, I don't. 
The board is after two things, bits and power, and they only get it by sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. I placate them when I have something to offer, but I can also be a real hard ass. It'd be a joy if I could kick out the corporate merchants and reclaim the docking fees in my lifetime. Too much of Groundbreaker's income is flowing in the wrong direction. I'd like to see that change. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. Well, I didn't expect her to be so tall. And did you see the size of her arms? What? No. Maybe? I don't... It's like somebody reached into my head and pulled out what I didn't know I wanted. You know how hard it is to find anybody who likes working with tools in a little town like Edgewater? I just met her. How could I be? All I know is, I want to talk with her more. Did you see how everybody on Groundbreaker listens to June Lei? She's just, here's how to fix it, and they trust her. It's just, she's calm and knows what to do. I wish I was half so confident. on news. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertising. Ah, the board. Organized, efficient, competent. Well, mostly. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Ah, oh, that's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? No! How dreadful. That was always Alex's greatest fear, you know. Devoured by those fiends. Becoming one with their... their droppings. Fine. You're free to go. I've removed the impound order on your ship. But before you go, I did have one request. Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells, 
I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, oh, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. What? Indeed. And you know where he is? Excelsior! An apprehension of this caliber will be tremendous for my career. I'll send you straight away to my superiors in Byzantium, only... Oh, no. Oh, no. The thing is, I needed money. A lot of money. Quickly, for reasons. That's really neither here nor there, don't you think? I've... I've been working on something on the side, all right? Something not entirely, uh, on the level. It's a little silly, I'll admit. Silly and completely illegal. <laughs> I'd be forced into early retirement if the board found out. I produce bootleg cereals. I just... I can't help myself. Juris and Prudence after hours. Or all my colonists, the new immortals. Romance, tragedy, debt collection. And they're all mine. That was you? Oh, my stars. All my colonists is just... Well, it gave me a story hangover for days, Mr. Udom. You're a fan? I've never met one in the flesh. I suddenly feel quite naked. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Udom. I don't judge. The heart wants what it wants, as they say. And mine yearns for the adoration of the masses. Held at a comfortable distance, of course. Flatterer. I might have pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market fence here on the Groundbreaker. I can't authorize the paperwork you'll need to turn Phineas in without it. Stray too much from the uh, straight and narrow, and one may just find himself assigned pastoral duty in a maximum security penitentiary. It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important in the hands of someone of such a dubious moral character. I was going to buy it back once I raised the capital. So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. Though, it might surprise you. Architect, have mercy. You don't possess a lick of sense, do you? You can't say anything worse to me than what I've already said to myself. Now, let's get back to business, hmm? How do you do? Ah, oh, how might I assist you? Access to Byzantium is highly restricted. Only a select few possess a nav key. If you were able to retrieve my seal from Gladys, and if you were able to prove you had something of worth to offer the board, well, then I might be able to pull some strings. The location of Phineas Wells, for one thing. Alex Hawthorne, the Unreliable's dearly departed captain, knew him. Perhaps you do as well? A wise choice. The board helps its friends.
Uh, hello. Now, is there something I can help? A better selection than you'll find. Rent an upstairs room? We interrupt your radio. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient. Or an oven. Just like store-bought. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Laws, maybe I should charge you double. Bless your heart. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Aren't you precious? No. The young man on the video was flesh and blood, all right. Could be it was automated. Mr. Thompson used to automate the intercom in Edgewater to say all sorts of things. A bit saved is worth two in the bush, was his favorite. Never did figure out what he meant. Edna didn't seem to think so, and I trust the dear girl's judgment. Well, maybe not in men, but she knows her comms. So like as not, someone's been down there recently. And if someone set up shop in Roseway, I'd wager they got something to hide. Quite the opposite, I believe. Nothing terribly secret about gunfire, is there? If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corps fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Neither do mine, dearie. Old Gladys knows the value of good work. You'll be compensated accordingly, I can promise you that. Should you find yourself responding to a certain distress call, and in so doing find yourself in possession of certain valuable corporate secrets, well, then we ought to have a chat over a pot of tea and my famous cookies. Law bless your atoms. 
Here's a copy of the SOS recording complete with the coordinates. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Any time, sweetheart. I had a question about your plan, Mr. Vicar. Of course. The cosmos is generated and directed by the universal equation, also known as the Grand Plan. By contemplating the teleological order of things, one can achieve verity. Oh, um, right. You had a question? Never mind. That about answers it. Hey, you got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine-looking ship. Only thing that's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. You're serious. You're giving me a shot. All right. Uh, hang on. Hang on. I put together a little speech, just in case you asked. Hey there, I'm Felix Millstone. I have prepared a list of reasons why I believe you should hire me to join the crew of your ship and or outlaw gang. Firstly, I am highly personable, and I get along well with anyone who is not of the jackass persuasion. <laughs> Sorry. He's funny. Uh, secondly... I can be counted on in the event of a firefight, standoff, and or raid. My motto is, if you need a steady gun hand, I'm your man. That motto is a, it's a work in progress. Additionally, I have several years of experience as a box hauler. This skill may come in handy if you need a body dragged away or a door held open while escaping enemy fire. In conclusion, thank you for considering me for your ship crew and or outlaw gang. I look forward to our adventures together. I thought that was real good, Felix. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What do you think? Am I in? Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not going to regret this. Really? We're picking up strays now? Look at that. A real vicar. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get along like a church on fire. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Yes, Captain. Beginning playback now. There's... there's viscera and death everywhere. Gunfire, gnashing teeth, the unemployed. For law's sake, if anyone's receiving this, please send help. 
What? No! No, no, no! Captain, we are now capable of accessing the Roseway landing pad. Also, corporate protocol requires that all distress signals include a list of key personnel for retrieval. The embedded names are Anton Crane, Vaughn Cortez, and Orson Shaw. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's Choice. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board certified jingle their favorite song. As you wish, Captain. Take care. I require a functioning captain to run the ship. Hey, Captain. Can I get your temperature on something real quick? What? No. If it were, I'd be hollering loud enough to wake the dead. So, June Lay and I have been talking some. Through messages? I got him here on my data pad, and well, she sent me a poem. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it. Because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good. But real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. And the trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. It made my chest hurt, kind of. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't. I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the Vale, they didn't... They said I was cold. Thanks, Captain. That makes me feel a touch better. I actually had another message from Junlei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm gonna change that. Right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends, got to thinking... Isabel? Who's... who's Isabel? They were... Close, Captain. Like, more than friends close. I don't know. June Lay talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? Lost Hope? If you're there, I'm sure things will be okay. Like, I mean, you wouldn't let nothing bad happen to me, right? Thanks for asking, by the by. It means something to know you're looking out. We're now in 
orbit above Roseway, Captain. Don't they have anybody to greet arrivals? The paper... Something with more teeth than is strictly necessary. Warning! Having They left their own outside to fly? Was it that bad? If you've come to end my life, let's be on with it. Oh, not actually one of them, are you? Uh, yes, yes. Anton Crane, lead scientist here. I must apologize if my call diverted you. I uh, may have panicked. Everything's under control now, though, truth be told. An attack. One that I'd wager was due to the nature of my research here. My research may not quite fall within legal parameters, so I'm under orders to maintain wireless silence. However, having your head used as target practice can addle one's thinking. I cut the call immediately once I'd gathered my wits. The Home Office can't know what's happening here. Captain's got your best interests at heart, mister. Honest. 
I suppose it can't hurt. If I don't get that research back, my life is over regardless. We were tasked with formulating a new and improved dental gel. Toothpaste. One cannot exaggerate the benefits of good dental hygiene. May I continue? While doing research on enzymes specific to the Raptodon's digestive system, we developed an additive which we subsequently discovered to be the most effective appetite suppressant ever. Not just any diet toothpaste, the ultimate diet toothpaste. Oh, I'm certain it could be made into that as well, with only a few changes to its molecular composition. But you're missing the point. Let's focus for a moment, shall we? Even if you disregard the obvious value of Auntie Cleo's Apazap diet toothpaste in and of itself, we're talking about my career here as well. Nice, is it not? Came up with that myself. It's a shame our marketing department is almost as befuddled as my co-workers here. Hours ago, a group of vicious malcontents fell upon us, shot up our labs and loosed our research subjects, the Raptodons. If those Cretans get their hands on my research, well, they'll need not kill me. Yes, but don't kill their mother if it's avoidable. We've need of her to replenish our stocks. I think there's gas in the lab somewhere that can be used to put them out. The research is in the safe in my office. You'll have need of my code and key card. The lab's entrance is in the side of a hill. You can't miss it if you just follow the road. You'll pass by the town's original by the Grand Architect. Jameson, he's in the old lab. That would surely lighten the weight on my conscience, as I am held to account for the well-being of every scientist here. Too many have been lost. Too many black marks against my name, as it were. And far too much paperwork. Of course they do. Please don't mistake my ambition for callousness. If my colleagues refuse to take their lives seriously, why should I? All they do is complain. They refuse to see the opportunity afforded us here. I understand I can come off as manipulative and ego-driven. It's something I've always been forced to contend with. This crane guy cares more about his research than his own people. That's a good week of work just to get the engine to turn over. You reckon that's how the bad guys got there?
Nice to get a little fresh air on your lungs. Huh? I <laughs> We're just gonna walk in? I mean, it's a secret right on it. Look at this place. Like some kind of tomb. Who the... you. Yeah, you. Get over here. You care to explain what you're doing here? Did you miss the big sign outside? That I am. Name's Porter. If Doc Crane did send you, I'd be glad for the help. Bad news is, we haven't been able to clean these outlaws out of the lab. Good news is, they haven't been able to escape, neither. They got in through the ventilation system, but we locked that down. There's no access from their level without a security key card. That also means no fresh air down there. Probably reeks of wrapped on musk. Couldn't happen to a nicer bunch. 
They don't care which side their lunch is on, but the wrapped cells are down with the outlaws, so they're the appetizers. When it looks like they're fixing to make a sally upwards, I have a sniper pop the lock on a wrapped cell. It's kept them busy. Not the way I'd choose to go, but I didn't choose to shoot up somebody else's workplace either. For now, I reckon they got no backup. On the other hand, we don't neither, and our mechanicals all went haywire for some damn reason. Damn mechanicals have always been more trouble than they're worth. Pretty damn sure. The shafts are sealed with four centimeter hatches. They're not getting back out that way without a security key card. They'd need to take mine. Or make a new one in my office, I guess. Why you want to know that? What for? Fair point. Here's a key card to my office. Head left from here and downstairs. It's across from the cafeteria. I got a machine that makes pass cards for us. Just don't knock over any paperwork in there. I got a system. Everyone all right?
It's been ransacked already. Hey, you over here. Oh, good. You're not shooting at me. That's a start. It's been a bit of a day, so I'll get to the point. Yes, I have Crane's research. No, I'm not giving it back. Sorry to disappoint you. I suppose it does not matter. Either Crane sent you, or you are some scavenger come to rob me in my moment of weakness. Let's make a deal. I'd like to go on living. You'd probably like to make some money. Help me get out of here, and I will pay you for your trouble. You mean other than the satisfaction of doing me a good turn? Trust me, I'll make it worth your while. I am good for my word. You will be equitably rewarded on my honor. But I will not haggle or bargain with you until you help me. The first thing I need is a key card to unlock my door. Then I'd need you to clear me a path out of here. There are two ways out. The quickest is through the front door, but Cleo Security's bottled up in there. If you don't want to shoot them, I suppose you could talk to them. The other way out is through the loading bay, but you'd have to clear out the rafts for me. Then I could just slip out the back, sight unseen. So you lied about not knowing Crane. I suppose I do not blame you. We liberated that research. We did not steal it. And yes, a few scientists were caught in the crossfire. Semantics. If I were consigned to spending my days making diet toothpaste, I would pray for a bullet to my skull. It is my one bargaining chip. If you want this research, you will help me out of this mess. Because Crane is a tool. Because no good deed goes unrewarded. Because doing me a good turn is the honorable and decent thing. Take your pick.
The research I carry is valuable. I am willing to go halves with you. You might be the first stroke of luck I've had all day. Thank you. I'm in your debt. Nothing beyond the purview of a talented freelancer like you. You really expect me to just let them pass? Why? So they can regroup behind their walls and mount another assault? Never mind. I'm obviously in no position to argue with you. If you can talk those guards into standing down, my people will follow suit. Take your time. I am, to my chagrin, not going anywhere. <laughs> 